So back on our user machine. Let's see if they can telnet to the 5406. As you can see, they're not able to. It looks like the telnet session is created and then it's just dropped. They can still telnet to edge 3 because we haven't enabled this command on edge 3. So while we're here, let's do that. So IP authorize managers 10.0.0.0 with the relevant mask. I'll log out and then telnet again. Notice that telnet fails. The user is not able to telnet to the switch. However, let's log out. And let's try and telnet to edge 3 from our machine on the management VLAN, VLAN 1. And as you can see, we are able to telnet to edge 3 from this machine, but we are not able to telnet to edge 3 from the user machine because we have restricted management access to VLAN 1. Now that lockdown was based on IP address. You can also lock it down just based on a VLAN number. So from my management machine on VLAN 1, let's telnet to the 5406. Log in. And I'm going to remove the command that says IP authorize managers with the relevant subnet. So now from my user machine, I am able to telnet and log in to the 5406. However, we can now type the command management VLAN and just specify VLAN 1 as the management VLAN. Now, as soon as I've done that, I cannot connect from our management machine to the machines and other VLANs. The other VLANs are essentially isolated from the management VLAN. So from our machine that's in the management VLAN, if I try and ping PC1, notice it says destination network unreachable. At the moment on the 5406, we've got this command management VLAN 1. So we are isolating VLAN 1 from other VLANs. What the switches do essentially is they create a hidden access list blocking all traffic to that VLAN. So notice the reply at the moment is destination net unreachable. But if I now type no management VLAN 1, notice the ping succeeds immediately. If I put that back again, notice the ping fails. The switches are creating hidden access lists blocking traffic from other VLANs to that VLAN. I can't connect from my recording machine to this PC if I enable the management VLAN because my recording PC is in the management VLAN and it's then isolated from all other VLANs. By the same token that means that this PC and other PCs will not be able to access the management interface on the HP switches because that VLAN has been isolated. Users in other VLANs apart from the management VLAN will not be able to connect to your networking equipment. So this is an additional step to protect your networking equipment from unauthorized users. So at the moment once again from my local PC I'm going to try and ping 10.0.2.252 PC1 and as you can see the pings fail. Typing show run on the router, in other words the 5406, you can see that we specified the management VLAN as VLAN 1. So I'm going to say no management VLAN 1. And let's do that ping again 
and as you can see the ping now succeeds so for future labs I'm gonna leave the configuration with no management VLAN because we want to enable connectivity between the PCs in later labs so just to give you another example of how VLANs can be used let's move PC2 to Edge 3 but keep it in VLAN 10 that means we are going to configure the link between the 5406 and Edge 2 to carry two tag VLANs, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. And we're going to do the same configuration on the link between Edge 2 and Edge 3. We don't need to change the IP address of PC2 as it's still in the same VLAN, VLAN 10. We just need to configure the port on Edge 3 in other words port 2 as an untagged port configure port 1 as tagged for VLAN 10 and 20 do the same on port 1 and 2 on H2 as well as, well as A3 on the HP router so let's do that configuration and test that we still have full connectivity between our PCs and networking devices so on Edge 3 typing show run shows me the running configuration as you can see port 24 is set as untagged for VLAN 20 and port 1 is tagged with VLAN 20 so we need to do something similar we need to create VLAN 10 and then say untagged and the port that we're going to untag is port 2 I physically I have physically unplugged this PC from edge 1 and plugged it into port 2 on edge 3 hence untagged 2 then we need to say tagged port 1 so that tagged frames from edge 3 to edge 2 for VLAN 10 so once again show run you can see that VLAN 10 has been created it's untagged on port 2 and tagged on port 1 I can then save the configuration on edge 2 we need to do something similar so currently show run shows me that VLAN 20 is tagged on ports 1 to 2 so we're going to create VLAN 10 and say tagged 1 to 2 show run once again shows me that both VLAN 20 and VLAN 10 are tagged on ports 1 and 2 save the configuration on our HP router the 5406 we've already configured an IP address for VLAN 10 10 0 10 100 and we can see that once again by typing show run notice VLAN 10 has an IP address configured it's tagged on port A2 we need to tag this on port A3 the link between the 5406 router and edge 2 so conf t VLAN 10 tagged A3 show run you can see now that VLAN 10 is tagged on port A2 and A3 we could also do the command show VLAN ports let's say A3 you can see that VLAN 1, 10 and 20 have been configured on this port looking at A2 you can see that VLAN 1 and 10 have been configured on that port we can also use the command show VLAN and in this case let's specify VLAN 10 you can see that VLAN 10 is tagged on port A2 and A3 VLAN 20 is tagged on port A3 VLAN 1 is untagged on lots of ports including port A1, A2, A3 but notice not A5 port A5 is untagged for VLAN 2 VLAN 1 is not configured on port A5 looking at edge 2 for example we could also type show VLAN and let's say VLAN 10 you can see it's tagged on both port 1 and 2 doing the same with VLAN 20 you can see it's tagged on port 1 and 2 on edge 3 show VLAN 10 you can see it's tagged on port 1 
but untagged on port 2 because PC2 is connected to port 2 and that port is untagged because we only want one VLAN configured on that port, VLAN 10. Looking at VLAN 20, you can see something very similar. It's tagged on port 1 but untagged on port 24. If we use the command show VLAN port and let's say 24, you can see that this port only belongs to VLAN 20 or port 2 only belongs to VLAN 10 or port 1 permits multiple VLANs. VLAN 1, 10 and 20 are permitted on port 1. This port supports both tagged and untagged VLANs. In Cisco and A-series terminology this would be known as a trunk port or in E-series terminology a tagged port. So let's see if our local machine can ping PC2. So from a DOS prompt I'm going to ping 10.0.10.250 and as you can see the ping succeeds. What about 20.251 and as you can see the ping succeeds. Now we can prove this once again. On edge 3 I can go on to interface let's say port 2 and disable this interface. Notice we are no longer able to ping PC2. PC2 is connected to port 2 on edge 3. So let me set a continuous ping and I'll enable the port and hopefully the pings will start succeeding. And there you go. Notice we are getting a response from PC2 with IP address 10.0.10.250. Typing the command show run shows me that port 2 is untagged for VLAN 10. If we change that, let's say we configured that port is untagged for VLAN 1. So port 2 is now going to be untagged for VLAN 1. Notice the pings will start to fail because the port has been moved from VLAN 10 into VLAN 1. So once again if we type VLAN 10 untagged port 2 taking that port and putting it into VLAN 10 the pings now succeed. So I'm hoping at this point you have a good understanding of how to configure VLANs into VLAN routing, tagged and untagged ports on HPE series switches. Now let me move PC2 back to edge 1 but while I'm doing that let's run this continuous ping. So at the moment PC2 is connected to edge 3 on port 2. I'm going to move PC2 back to edge 1 on port 24 and let's see how many pings fail or time out while I physically move the cable. So I'm going to leave this recording, move the cable and hopefully you won't see the loss of too many pings. So I've moved the cable. On edge 3 as an example I could go on to interface 2 and disable the interface. On edge 1 if we type the command show interface brief uh, we can see that port 24 is still down. So the port is still down. Let me go and check the cabling again. So as you can see the pings have started to succeed. Show interface brief shows me that the interface is now up. So I just had an issue where I had a dodgy cable and I just had to push it in properly. But as you can see, we've been able to move PC2 from edge 3 to edge 1 and without changing an IP address or changing any configuration, the ping started to succeed 
once I had plugged the PC into the switch properly. So there's another example of how you can move PCs from one switch to another, but they remain within the same VLAN. So from a user's point of view, there is no difference. They are connected to the same virtual LAN.